is there a truly reality out there that humans could really know? It's an age-old battle between realists and absolutists. God is not great, how religion ruins everything. And yet it's utterly and totally ridiculous. We need to live for something beyond ourselves. I want to read you some experts from a poem by W.H. Auden called Miss Gee. Let me tell you a little story about Miss Edith Gee. She lived in Clevedon Terrace at number 83. She'd a slight squint in her left eye. Her lips were thin and small. She had narrow sloping shoulders and she had no bust at all. The Church of St. Aloysius was not so very far. She did a lot of knitting, knitting for the church bazaar. Miss G looked up at the starlight and said, does anyone care that I live on Cleveland Terrace on 100 pounds a year? She paused by the loving couples. She turned her head away. She passed by the loving couples and they didn't ask her to stay. Miss D sat in the side aisle. She heard the organ play and the choir sang so sweetly at the ending of the day. Miss, ne Miss G knelt down in the side aisle. She knelt down on her knees. Lead me not into temptation, but make me a good girl, please. The days and nights went by her like waves round a Cornish wreck. She bicycled down to the doctor with her clothes buttoned up to her neck. She bicycled down to the doctor and rang the surgery bell. Oh, doctor, I have a pain inside of me and I don't feel very well. Dr. Thomas looked over her and then he looked some more, walked over to his wash basin and said, why didn't you come before? Dr. Thomas sat over his dinner, though his wife was waiting to ring, rolling his bread into pellets, said, cancer's a funny thing. Nobody knows what the cause is, though some pretend they do. It's like some hidden assassin waiting to strike at you. Childless women get it, and men when they retire, as if they had some outlet for their creative fire. They took Miss Gee to the hospital. She lay there a total wreck, lay in a ward for women with her bedclothes to her neck. They lay her on a table. The students began to laugh and Mr. Rose, the surgeon, he cut Miss Gee in half. Mr. Rose, he turned to his students, said, gentlemen, if you please, we seldom seen a sarcoma as far as advanced as this. They took her off the table, they wheeled away Miss Gee down to another department where they study anatomy. They hung her from the ceiling, yes, they hung up Miss Gee, and a couple of Oxford groupers carefully dissected her knee. Listen to that last line, and a couple of Oxford groupers carefully dissected her knee. You know, I found this poem haunting. I mean, what does it tell us? It tells us about a woman, a human being, a person just as you and I, having fears, moods, passions, and desires, a lonely person trying to do what's right, a lonely church person trying to make a sense of life. And then what? Then what? She is reduced to some sort of block of meat on an anatomy class table. It all seems so cold. It all seems so harsh. It all seems so uncaring. The students lay her on the table, and what do they do? They began to laugh. I wonder what folks would do to our bodies if we got old and sick and died of cancer or whatever, and they spread us out on a table like a slab of meat. I wonder if they would laugh too. In a sense, why not? Auden's poem, Miss G, I think is a poetic parallel to Oxford zoologist and atheist and evolutionary apologist Richard Dawkins' God delusion. It's portraying, I think, the utter emptiness and meaningless of any philosophy or theory that has reduced us to pure matter and matter alone. It shows, in a sense, what a purely materialist universe offers us. You know, I think it was the popular atheist Carl Sagan 
who once said that the universe is all that there is or ever was or ever could be. And I thought a funny response to that was a London novelist. He's not that well known, but I think he's great. His name is Michael Frayen. And he wrote the following words. He talked about the Big Bang. And he said the following. He said, there does seem, quote, there does seem to be a rather extensive state of affairs that has come into being without any precedence to account for it all. Close quote. Somewhat of an understatement, I admit, but it, merely, but it was a, an utterly brilliant point he was trying to make. I mean, the universe just happened to be there. That's it. You know, and, and as he said, as Frayn said, this is a rather extensive state of affairs for to have, to have followed out of nothing from no real precedence at all. It would be like somebody looking at London, London and saying, well, that's just all there is, it, period. It's just it, period. Anyway, for all science, for all its wonders, for all the good it can do, and not mention it does some bad at well, it just doesn't seem to have all the answers, does it? It doesn't, it doesn't seem that it could have the questions answered. What it really can do, in a sense, is put us like where the surgeons put Miss Gee, and that was on a table where they cut her in half and just mocked her. And then what? What do we have? Nothing left. Now, I don't know what Auden meant. I don't know what Auden meant when he wrote Miss Gee. But, but to play the avant-garde intellectual here, you know, in a sense, what does it matter what he means? What matters what it means to the reader as I see someone Auden? What, what it means to me is I see Auden freaking out, freaking out as he sees what a, to him appears to be this cold, hard, reality which is just much of much as science basically tells us we're just genes we're selfish genes trying to survive and you know miss b g kept her body covered up and lived without love and companionship and a husband you know and on and on and then she just died and that was it she was laid out like a slab of meat on a table see i'm sorry though that just doesn't work it just doesn't work because I don't, not, it's, not, it's not because I don't want it to work. It's not because I don't want to think that's all that I am. It just doesn't work because I think it's ridiculously inadequate to explain reality, to explain the human heart, to explain, you know, the world, to use random mutation and natural selection and evolution to explain life. I think it's almost like trying to explain the Mona Lisa through the study of the paint chemistry of Leonardo da Vinci's paint that he used. Now, Auden's Miss Gee points to a world that is frankly cold, sterile, and vacuous. A world that might exist on another planet in another universe. One not populated with folks like Miss Gee. But it doesn't work, it doesn't explain what life is really like in the world that we inhabit, that we live in.